Alrighty folks, today we are going to begin our discussion on simple machines. Now, if you look in this little video that's here, we actually see a bunch of simple machines in action all at the same time. So first off, right here we've got a pulley and you can see uh, the pulley, the blue ball goes down and that pulls this up and what it's pulling up there is actually a lever. And uh, once the lever gets high enough, its angle changes and becomes an inclined plane, which allows the yellow ball to roll down. So just a couple of examples, but let's focus on learning about each individual simple machine. All right, our agenda for today is first, I want you to go ahead and take Quick Quiz 3.2, which will be your attendance for today, and then go ahead and set up your notes. Our topic for today is simple machines, and our essential question is, what are simple machines? After that, we'll go ahead and take notes on the simple machines. So go ahead and pause the video, take your Quick Quiz and set up your notes, and then come on back. Alrighty, our learning target for today is I can identify the simple machines. So before we talk about simple machines, let's go ahead and talk about what a machine is in general. And a machine is a tool that increases the effect of human effort. And we'll talk more about what it means to increase that effect at a later date. But for now, what you just need to do is it basically makes things easier for humans to use. So you have very simple versions of machines. Uh, a ramp, for example, allows you to get to higher elevations uh, easier than it would be to just climb straight up. A hammer allows you to apply force to objects in a very effective way, and one of the objects you might apply that force to is a nail, which will allow you to pierce an object and then use that to fasten objects like wood together. So those are examples of simple machines. There are also much more complex machines, starting with relatively non-complex machines, which are scissors. And what scissors do is um, you use a lever uh, with the um, pushing and pulling of the scissors, and then the, um, the work that is produced by pulling and pushing on that lever is transferred to the blade of the scissors, and then that blade cuts paper. A bicycle is a more complex machine than that because it includes things like levers with the pedals, uh, and then you have wheels and axles, uh, and a bunch of other things in there as well, different types of levers and wheels and axles, all sorts of things in a bicycle. And then you have an even more complex machine where you have a car where you have thousands of simple machines working or machines working together to make one big machine. What question does the previous slide answer? All right, so we're just going to start off by just going through the simple machines and explaining what they are. So I'm guessing most of you have heard of these. If not, that's fine. Uh, make sure, though, that you can identify your six simple machines uh, and you should be able to see them in action and identify which one it is. So let's go ahead and start with the lever, or some people call it lever. A lever is a rigid bar that is free to move around a fixed point, and that fixed point is called a fulcrum, a fixed pivot point of a lever. So there are tons of examples of levers. Uh, a very simple one is a teeter-totter uh, on the playground where you go up and down, up and down. Uh, you can also make your own lever. So example right here, a screwdriver opening a paint can. That is example of a lever where the lip of the paint can actually becomes the fulcrum. And a hockey stick is also an example of a lever um, as you kind of swing the hockey stick around a fixed point that is um, above or at the top of the hockey stick. So all of those are levers. Next up is the wheel and axle. And a wheel and axle is defined as two discs or cylinders, each a different radius that turn together. The wheel is larger and the axle is smaller. So if you imagine for me a sec uh, for a second a screwdriver, you have the handle, which is a little bit thicker, and the uh, shaft of the screwdriver, which is thinner. So the handle of a screwdriver is actually a wheel, and the shaft of the screwdriver is an axle. And in this example, you turn the wheel, the handle of the screwdriver, and that turns the axle of the screwdriver, the shaft of it. A bike wheel is another example of a wheel and an axle. So here you can see a bike wheel where you have the wheel itself, and then the axle is right here in the middle of the chain and the derailleur. 
And um, the axle is the really small thing, or that really small part right there, the small cylinder, I should say. And then the wheel is the big disc. In this example, the axle is what's turned because you turn the pedals and then that turns the axle. And then the wheel turns as a result of the axle turning because the wheel is connected to the axle. An inclined plane is a slanted surface along which a force moves an object to a different elevation. So there are tons of examples of inclined planes. Uh, you have a wheelchair ramp or a highway ramp. In this example right here, I've got a truck ramp. And what you can see here is that this simple machine, instead of this guy um, taking these boxes and lifting them up into or out uh, or out of this uh, truck, he is able to move a larger distance and move the boxes with less force. And so that is what an inclined plane does. A wedge is a V-shaped object whose sides are two inclined planes sloped towards each other. So uh, we see over here uh, a guy using an ax and an ax, a knife, and a nail are all examples of wedges. Uh, and what you see here is, if you imagine an axe, you have the tip of the axe, and that's two inclined planes slanted towards each other. When you bring that axe down, like this guy is here, uh, the force, the downward force, um, is redistributed and pushes the log or the wood apart from each other and allows you to split the wood. A screw is an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. So here you see an example of a screw, and you see those threads, and those threads are going to be an inclined plane, basically a ramp that just happens to go around the screw. And so uh, examples of screws include screws, nuts, and bolts. And basically what the screw is doing there is it's taking your rotating motion and turning it into a, um, a up and down or side to side motion depending on the way the screw is arranged or the nut and bolt. A pulley is a rope that fits into a groove in a wheel. So uh, you can do a t you can imagine a ton of different types of pulleys. You have your flagpole pulley uh, where you use it to raise and lower the flag. Uh, window blinds are an example of a pulley. So up in here, there's actually an example or a pulley where you pull on one side and then it lifts the other side. Sail pulleys, um, if you've ever been on a sailboat, it uses a lot of different types of pulleys. And cranes actually use a bunch of pulleys all together to really make a very powerful tool. What question do the previous slides answer? All right, so you can actually combine simple machines into a compound simple machine. So this would be a combination of two or more simple machines that operate together. So scissors are going to be combinations of levers and wedges. So the levers are kind of uh, the um, the handles and then the or the kind of the metal part here. And the fulcrum is the screw that holds them together. The wedge is going to be the blade and uh, the sharp end of the the metal edge and the levers allow you to pull and push uh, and those allow you to kind of control the motion here and then the wedge allows you to cut the paper. A fishing rod combines a lever, a wheel and axle, and a pulley. The lever is the rod itself, the wheel and axle is the, um, the reel, and the pulley is also the reel as it attaches to the line. And a car is going to be thousands and thousands of simple machines all combined together. What question does the previous slide answer? Alrighty, folks, that's it for simple machines. I want you to go ahead and pause this video, and then I want you to take the quiz where you identify simple machines, and then come on back and we'll go over the correct answers. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and start this off. What kind of simple machine is a broom? So here in this image, we see a gentleman sweeping with a broom. And you'll see here, uh, if you can imagine, that what he's doing is he's keeping this hand steady while this hand kind of sweeps back and forth, moves back and forth, which means this hand is acting as a fulcrum and this hand is moving the lever. So this is going to be a lever. What kind of simple machine is a nut and a bolt? Well. As you can see on this nut, you have threads that move up and down, and on the bolt 
uh, sorry, on the bolt, you have the threads that move up and down, or like this, are basically a ramp that goes around. And then on the nut, you have the same on the inside. And remember that that is an example of a screw. What type of simple machine is a doorstop? Well, a doorstop, in the way that it operates, is actually two inclined planes together in a V shape, and it actually kind of works uh, in the reverse way that a an axe works, whereas the axe, you're swinging it into the wood. In this example, you're taking a door and you're swinging it into the doorstop, and it acts as a wedge that actually uh, prevents motion from happening. A switchback is a trail that goes back and forth up a steep mountain to make a hike easier. What type of simple machine is a switchback? So here you have an example. You can see this is a really steep mountain, but these switchbacks go up the mountain uh, and they make the mountain easier to go from the bottom to the top. So to gain elevation, but you're increasing your distance. So that is going to be an example of an inclined plane. And if you answered those four questions like that, you should have gotten 100%. Alrighty, folks, if you have any questions about simple machines, feel free to post them in our discussion forum. And I'd like you to go ahead and self-assess on a scale of one to five. How well do you understand simple machines? Are you super lost, a one, or are you a five and could build a machine right now? Alrighty, folks, so that's it for simple machines. Um, make sure to check the Schoology folder. We've got a little activity for you there to help you apply your understanding of simple machines.